hello everybody welcome back to another video i'm your girl jesse b and today we're going to talk about hygiene burnout this is requested by a follower so thank you so much for um supporting me and shout out to you um and this is actually a very relevant thing for me yeah so but before we begin for those who don't know yes i am yes he did and yes i said yes so there we go boom bam yeah he asked me about two weeks ago um he proposed to john proposed at my parents house and easiest yes ever so um thank you guys in advance so if i don't say thank you just thank you in advance and uh yeah so we're really trying to get our ish together so hopefully we can get it together sooner than later and i can be snatched okay that's what i'm looking for but anyway how do you burn out here we go because we got stuff to do places to be people to see i got an off day today um all right so i got my notes let me go to my notes I'm gonna speak on my um, personal experience first and then we'll go from there. So for me, I am now, as y'all saw in the previous video, I'm now double booking, which means not only do I have one column full of people, I have another column full of people. The first column is eight patients, five in the morning, three in the afternoon. I think the other one is, I believe it's six patients in the second column. So that's a grand total of 14 patients usually. Sometimes <laughs> they squeeze in at the very top. So it's like eight o'clock, 8.30, nine o'clock, 9.30, so on and so forth. We get an hour break and then right back to it. Two o'clock, 2.30 until five, uh, four o'clock, which is our last patient. So it's a lot. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. It's a lot. However, it's possible to do. Um, I will say before I got my wonderful hygiene assistant, I did have a couple of times where I did try to double book because I had ops. I had another op right next door to me and as well as I used to make trays before I had patients come in. And so of course I would have to audit everything. I would audit till I couldn't audit anymore and I would go home. And then that's how I kind of stayed up on it. But it became a lot, especially when you know, this one patient needs something and they have to wait on the doctor and I have to go find the doctor and go clean the other patient. This patient's getting mad because they've been waiting this long. It's a lot. So it's really helpful to, one, have some type of entertainment. And two, just make sure that you're mindful of the time. You have to, like, be consistent and precise with everything you do to, for it to flow naturally and for you to not feel overwhelmed. And it's a lot. You have to prep beforehand. You have to... Make sure, you know, some type of TV or devices on so you can kind of distract the patient. Because you got to treat the patient like a baby sometimes. And it's, I'm sorry, but it's true. You have to baby patients sometimes because that's, they want to feel wanted and need. And they want, it to, they want to feel like you're paying attention to them. Because it's not always the case. And I'm so sorry. I can't. I'm only one person. So, before that, I did do that. However, now that I have help, glory be to God, um, it's a lot easier easier to it's a lot easier to delegate you know certain things because there's a lot hygiene assistants can do and there's some things that hygiene assistants can't do so when they can do it everything's wonderful everything's good the flow is flowing i've never been happier but when they can't do certain things it's like ah because you have to be with another patient so the other patient just sitting there and those ways the my ops are set up my main op is the one with the tv that works the other op does not have a tv that works and what i try to do like first thing in the morning when i get a patient i don't get the first patient and put them in my room with the tv i put the patient in the room without the tv why jessica why do you do that because uh, if i'm in the room with the person without the tv they don't have to worry about sitting and waiting but the person that has the TV that's waiting on me, the person that comes at 8.30, they're going to need something to do, something to either, you know, take their x-rays or just sit there and wait for the doctor. The majority of the time, the way it flows is they'll, the 8 o'clock comes, they sit in the room. I go ahead and get started with whatever they need, typically. Or the hygiene assistant, Drea, she'll go in and, you know, grab the first patient. Meanwhile, I'm probably, like, on my computer auditing or, you know, checking emails or whatever the case i'm doing something I'm not just doing nothing um and then 
Drea takes x-rays. She's like, okay, just they're ready for you. I'll go ahead and clean them majority of the time. Now, doctor just so happens to see that they're getting the x-rays. Sometimes she hops in before me. I'm like, okay, cool. That means I don't have to wait on you to pull you out of treatment. Perfect. And so she might do that. But most of the time, I go ahead and clean them so the doctor can have a fresh landscape so she can see everything. It just helps her to diagnose everything a whole lot easier. So that's cool too. My doctor is amazing because she's very lenient. So it's very helpful. Um, so I cleaned the first patient, the eight, uh, eight o'clock patient, clean, done, wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. While I'm cleaning, usually the um, 8.30 patient, try they try to get them to come at least 15 minutes prior because they might need a medical history update. So they'll do that for 15 minutes. 8.30 comes around, Dre's walking them back, and then they're in the my, my main op. While she's with them, maybe updating, their, you know, seeing if they had any medical changes, seeing if they have x-rays needed, vitals, <clears throat> they're sitting in there. They might be ready, but I'm over here doing my notes from the last patient and clean it up. Th that way she doesn't have to worry about cleaning up. Because to me, she does a lot. And I get it, because I was the one doing all of it. <laughs> so I get it. So I try my best to help wherever she needs help. I don't want her to feel the burnout that I feel. I would never want that for her. So I try my best to fill in where I can fill in. I still have arms that can work. I still have legs that can walk. I'm not gonna just let her do everything. That's just ridiculous to me. And I would never expect her to do everything. And I, it's so funny because she's so efficient but she's like, Jessica, I can do it all I can do. It. I'm like, girl, it's no problem. Like, <laughs> we good. I just want to make sure you good. So it's funny that she tells me that all the time because I'm telling her, like, girl, it's no big deal. I can do it. Like, I'm I'm not helpless. So yeah, that's that's that. So the burnout happens for me when we get to say the medical history, patients start to show up late. It pushes my time back. The grace period is 15 minutes. However, if they pull up right at their appointment time, have to turn around and do their medical history, which some people seem to forget what happened to them in the last year. Like you forgot major, like major surgeries or, you know, anything. It's like, wow. So it takes them a while to do that. Next, they need x-rays. They fuss about x-rays. They don't want the x-rays. We tell them, well, it's hard to diagnose you, what's going on with you because you came in here aching and crying. Then they say, okay, we can do the x-rays. Somebody takes our x-ray sensor. Somebody else is using the sensor. We only have one good sensor. <laughs> okay, so you get where I'm going. It's a whole lot, a whole lot of The sensor is gone. We have to wait. I'm with a patient, so <laughs> what you want me to do? The patient that needs the x-rays that came late is in the bad op. The one where I don't have a TV working. Here they are complaining. First of all, you showed up late, but that's neither here nor there. Because at the end of the day, I'm wrong, you're right. Right? Right. So here they are complaining. Doc is in treatment. So you're sitting there, you can't do your x-rays, so no movement, no activity. You're bored, you're not stimulated. The TV's not working, still not stimulated. And I'm over here talking to another patient. So it's like, it's a lot. The time starts ticking, rolling around. Now the 8.30 patient's time turns into uh, 8.45, almost 9. Doctor is still there working on treatment patients. So it's like it's a lot. That's when the burnout starts to kick in because sometimes it happens every day. It get, you get behind every day. I'm hungry. I'm tired. My back is hurting. I'm annoyed because I got these whiny patients that wants to whine about everything when you showed up late. And right on time, don't show up right on time. That means you're late. Like, am I missing something here? Wasn't the old saying like, wait, if you're early, you're on time. And if you're on time, you're late. Same thing. Help me, help me. So I don't get behind. So you can get your cleaner and get out of here. That's what I need from you. So that happens. I, when I clean patients, I stand. I've been standing for quite some time now. Reason being, the chairs are so annoying. They're not good with my posture. They're low, like the low, low lumbar support. It's not good for me. I need high and mighty. 
And if I can't get high and mighty, I'm gonna stand. So what I do a lot of the times now, I'm wearing uh, back braces, I'm wearing corsets, not because my back is hurting, quote unquote, but because I wanna create good posture, good ergonomics. And for that, I'm grateful that I can stand because you don't have to worry about like sitting and getting that kind of like pudge like thing going on, fupa, whatever you wanna call it. That helps me a lot. So to prevent burnout, to prevent physical burnout, I try to support myself as best as I can. So I'm not like over well, overusing certain areas of my back. I'm, you know, I'm upright, I'm having correct ergonomics and my back is not hurting. Keep your patient low. When you lower them, you make sure you do your neutral position. Uh, check, make sure you're like still in neutral position. I can do this without doing this, without doing this, without doing this. Sometimes I do do that. However, I'm doing a lot better with realizing what I'm doing before I get to a point where I'm stuck like that. Having a patient who um, has a head rest, like a head pillow, that really helps because it helps with doing the maxillary, uh, the maxillary um, arch. It helps when they chin down, when you're trying to do the um, lower interiors, the lingual side. It helps a lot. Like, it, I know it doesn't seem like it, so if you're pillow if you don't have a head pillow i would advise just just trying to see if you can purchase something it's a tax write off if your office doesn't support it but you can get you a pillow for their neck and their head and it really makes the biggest difference i've noticed such a big difference and i just i just think it's a really good adjustment for us because we're doing this all day it's a lot so i recommend doing as many my small minute changes to make the biggest difference that's to me, that's the biggest thing because at the end of the day, your back ain't really insured like that. So, you know, it, it goes a long way. It's nice to have a healthy back. So for me, when I am feeling like well, my back is very tense, when I feel like I have little, little kinks in my neck, I take it to the doctor. I go to the chiropractor pretty much at least once a month, if no, no less than once. I have to go get aligned. And a lot of people, for some reason, don't believe in getting alignment. I do. You take your car to get aligned. Like, why can't you get aligned? Alignment matters because if you're off, your muscles are off, you're pulling the wrong way, and it's only going to get worse. So you have to make sure you're being aligned. You have to make sure you're being hydrated. And I know, I know, I know, I know it's difficult to drink and go pee. <laughs> I know this. Take it from me, somebody somebody who is double booking but it's worth it because you're not going to get these cramps you're not going to feel lightheaded you're not going to get hot you can be more calm cool and collected hydrate yourself even if you have to put like some flavorings in your water keep it out so you can see it of course clean it and of course don't use a glove when you're drinking or maybe get one with the straw so you can just kind of bend down and keep going like that's okay like who cares at the end of the day this is about your health so you can take care of other people for their health. So get you a bottle. Actually, I just got something from TJ Maxx. Let me show you guys what I got. It's so cute. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys both, both cups because I love cups. Cups make me happy. The first one is from Starbucks. So it's pretty, you see it, you see it, you see it, gorgeous. Green is my favorite color, so there you go. But it has a top, it has a um, top and a straw. I use this, but I don't really take it to work because I'm not, I just love this thing so much. I just take this like when I'm doing like, you know, running around, doing errands, things of that nature. But just another example of something that you can use with a straw. But this bad baby right here. I got this the other, other day when I was doing my last minute Christmas shopping. And this is what I'm going to use because you see the angle, you see the curve. Yes. Yes. What's the brand? High Hydroflow. Hydroflow. You see it, yes. So Hydroflow, I got this from TJ Maxx. They had a bunch of these. So if you're like in the Atlanta area, like Dunwoody, Sandy Springs area, the TJ Maxx's over there are amazing. So do yourself a favor. Oh, I think I'm gonna get some cover today. I deserve. Then I'm gonna go to the gym. Okay, so yeah, this is what that is. And it's huge. This is a Hydroflow Capri, the 40 ounce or 1180 milliliters. And it's amazing. It's insulated with copper lining. It's sweat proof, cold for 12 hours, hot for six hours, stainless steel, triple insulated, and dishwasher safe. So yeah, 
highly, 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 highly recommend this because again, water has so many benefits and why not benefit yourself? <laughs> you feel me? So you don't have to use your benefits. Oh my God, I'm killing it. Okay, I gotta stop while I'm ahead. So we talked about healthy posture. I did find a couple of chairs that I'm thinking that I might invest in, which is a tax write-off. Um, it's a couple of chairs. And so you guys know like the regular saddleback chair. I'm gonna look it up just in case for those who are new to hygiene. If you guys don't know, I'll show you guys that. Give me like two seconds so I can pull this other one up because I think the phones be listening. So this is called the Orbital Support System. I don't know if I want to use this one just because it's a lot going on with like the arms and stuff. Because I feel like if you that like, I won't say lazy. If you can't pick your arms up, then, you know, but this is the Orbital. I saw this on Facebook, so I don't know. I'm gonna go do my research, see what's good. And then the other one is just a real simple one. And I've used this in school and I've used this at um, at my job. At, yeah, at my job. The only thing, people have some sticky fingers in my office. They like to take stuff when it's not theirs. And I don't understand it. Oh yeah, this is good. This is for $99. Ooh, this is pink and it's $48. This is nice. Okay, let me show you guys what I mean. So this one right here, focus. This is what I mean. This, I know it doesn't look like anything, but you sit on it like you're on a saddle, like on a horse. And it gives you the perfect posture because it, it leans you a certain way that you can't help but to, to, to activate your core. Absolutely amazing. So I'm thinking about investing in that and it's smaller and I don't have to worry about those big bulky chairs. Those chairs are annoying. I'm so sorry. I don't like them. And yeah, so I'm thinking about investing in that. I, th I just think that that is probably one of the best investments you can make as a hygienist when it comes to your ergonomics, just because it's it's, it's a really good product. I've used it. I vouch for it, guys. It's, it's really good. The second one is a good pair of loops, okay? Loops, loops, loops. And I actually went to the Hemming this year and I found this new type of loop that I never really used before. When I had my um, G, G whatever, what are they called? Q Optics and um, the other people come to my um, school, they didn't have these type of uh, loops. So let me show you guys real quick. So, and I think I'm gonna get these next time. Um, just because my, uh, my loops now, they're, they're slowly going downhill. They are. Um, I'm trying to see, oroscopic and loops and Q optics are the ones that I kind of want to look into. So here we go. Just an example, but these loops have the angle. So it refracts the light, it bends it down to where you can see without having to bend down. See? So, I, I think I'm gonna get those just because I don't have to do this. I can literally look and it looks down for me. To me, that's brilliant. That is a really good product to use. I feel like I got my money's worth out of my uh, my old loops. They're old, they dusty. I've only had used my loops for less than a year. So I, I got my money's worth and I think I'm just gonna invest in some more loops. I got to because my I'm, I'm an investment. If I don't invest in myself, who gonna do it, okay? So I gotta make sure that I'm good so I can make uh, make sure other people are good. So I think when Hemming comes in March, I think it's March of next year, I'm definitely gonna speak to a representative just to see, you know, what can we do? Can we move forward, get some, get some better loops so my back can be great because I'm young and vivacious. So loops, chair, chiropractic. And the last thing, oh, water. And the last thing to me, which is more of a luxury side, is just to go to get a massage. A massage is a, re a really good way to release the toxins, release the muscles so they, they, they're not tense. To me, that's the best thing for you um, when it comes to your muscles. Of course, hydration, but truly getting the physical attributes of that, you gotta grind it out. You have to like push all of that out and getting a massage, it doesn't have to be a luxurious massage. It can be a simple one. Like you can go 
to the mall. Like I know Perimeter Mall, like Cumberland Mall, they have like those quick little kiosk things where you sit on the, the chair and then just massage your back. I mean, to me, that's a great way to, you know, um, get all the kinks and knots out. So highly recommend that. That's what I do. And I'm just telling you guys this, this is based on trial and error and strictly my opinion. But this is what I do to prevent burnout. I have to, I have to do this. I have to prioritize me. Otherwise, they're not gonna prioritize you. I'm just saying, they're not. So um, that, I would say number six, if this is number six, I would say make sure you take off. I know work is wonderful. I know you're probably just now getting the hygiene and everything so glorious and rainbows and sunshine and everybody's wonderful and SLP, profi, kids, like, babe, <laughs> it will come a time when you don't want to see a tooth, you don't want to talk to nobody with teeth, you want to see no mouths. It gets to that point sometimes where you're just like, please, I'm going home. I'm not doing anything. And when you get to that point, please be cognizant of that because you can carry that same energy back into work. Learn how to let it go. Once you leave work, that's it. You don't have to take work home. Patients don't come to your house. You don't have to do computer work. Let it go. Leave the pain, leave the frustration at work and record everything so they'll know what's going on. It's important to have not only your back physically, but on the contract. Like it's important to know legally what's going on too. Leave that stuff behind when you're when you're done at work. When you clock out, clock out. Go get you something to eat. Go sit in your car and decompress. Do something. You gotta do something that's gonna really help you reset because you give and give so much. Don't continue to keep giving when you're when you know you don't have nothing to give in the first place. That's called burnout. <laughs> so like take your time to relax i love to do um salt baths sometimes like epsom salt the dr teals amazing the thing that, the video that i showed you guys when i uh, passed my bar my bar boards <laughs> when i passed boards i used dr teals i believe lavender epsom salt and i use cbd salt baths uh, it's amazing. I slept so good the night before. I got a massage, which was the best massage I ever had in my life, thanks to my parents. They gave me a, a gift card to go get a massage. And I did my bath, and it was, ooh, sorry. And it was amazing, and I slept so good. I was so at peace. So you probably just need to just take the time out to just do you, do a skincare routine, do something that makes you happy legally, that makes you happy, okay? And that's healthy. Sometimes working out, for me working out keeps my blood pressure real low. And that's good, my blood pressure's 113 over like 80 something, I think 70 something, excuse me, diastolic is like 70. So yeah, do something that makes you happy. Um, trying to think, what else before I go? What is something else that helps me out? Of course reading um but like for the during the week i don't read a lot but during the week um i make sure i eat good i make sure i sleep keeping the house clean also allows me to just calm down and yeah so those are like the main things that i do and i also just try to make sure i look ahead at my schedule if i feel like a five-day work week is a lot i tell them to reschedule them give me a half day I've realized now I don't like full days. Full Fridays are a lot. A full week's worth of double booking is a lot. And I truly start to feel it in my back. I have to rest. Full Fridays are a lot because full Fridays means that probably there's specialty there and specialty is gonna be there the entire time, which means I can work under the doctor. Um, no general supervision yet for me because I'm, I'm I'm going up to two years now. I just renewed my license. So yeah, that's a whole ordeal. Um, but yeah, do your half days. Half day Friday. Take it. Because they're not going to take care of you at the end of the day. And it's so important that you realize that from the jump. I'm serious about my time. I'm serious about my health. 
I'm serious about everything. So take me seriously. If I'm telling you I'm tired, if I'm telling you my back is hurting, I don't want to do a full day Friday. Give me a half day so I can at least go relax and rejuvenate, rewind. So I can come, you know, 100% next time. Monday, I can start fresh. I'm good. So those are the things that I want to talk to you guys about. If you guys have any questions, any concerns, any feedback, let me know in the bottom, on the comments. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to do better. I promise you I am. So let me know what you guys want to see. I'm always open for new ideas. I'm always open for the comments and the suggestions. But you got to let me know, guys. I don't know. I can't read everybody's mind. But for those who have been rocking with me for this long, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your support. I appreciate you guys. I'm definitely going to keep you guys updated on the plans. Um, I'm just super excited. So I'll talk to you guys later.